Welcome to the Startup Grind. Okay, I think this was the most energetic intro at Startup Grind ever. <laughs> uh, I have two more things. First, if you have any questions, just go to slido.com and enter the hashtag SGP and uh, you can post your questions. They will appear on the screen and you can also vote on questions from the other people. So I hope you'll be active. Um, the second thing, um, we are in Prague Startup Center. I don't know how many of you have been here before. Uh, they are our partner and they provided us this uh, amazing venue. They also try to help entrepreneurs just as we do. And it doesn't really matter if you are really at the beginning with just an idea or you already started a company. They can help you with finding mentors. They can help you finding investors. They can help you set up a business plan. Or if you are further down the road, they can help find some financing or expansion with the expansion abroad. So there are some leaflets in the back. Uh, I know they have some uh, offices that are free. I don't really think you can find anything for a better price around this area. So feel free to contact them. I am pretty sure they will be very happy. Okay. Uh, let's begin uh, with our usual question at Startup Grind. I feel quite bad that you are a bit lower. <laughs> Should I go lower too? Um, can you tell us uh, where are you from? How did you grow up? You want to get so quick. personal, right? <laughs> So I come from Czech Republic, from a small picturesque town Trebíč, it's in Vysočina. And yeah, I studied in Zlín, the city of Tomáš Baťa, the shoes, in marketing. And uh, I've been working for Red Bull for 11 years. And I focus mainly on marketing, communication and digital and innovation. Yeah, working currently for the CSE region. And why, why did you decide marketing? Did you really watch, you know, a lot of commercials as a kid in the TV? Or? Right, right. <laughs> well, I was not allowed to watch TV much by my parents. They were quite, like, strict on this. So I was more, like, uh, trying to do these things uh, and all the mountain biking and stuff like that was my hobby. And I think it's really good, actually, to, even at an early stage, if you are young, uh, to get a date with yourself. You know, to actually know yourself better, what uh, gives you energy, what takes you energy, even if you do some hobbies or you don't have work yet. And I think even at early stage, and you can do it later on, 10 years later, and compare it, doing some personality tests like, you know, Gallup, Strange Finder, or MBTI. I think it's very good to actually do this and know yourself. Later on, you can do this with your team to actually know each other. Why is this colleague, like, behaving like he is, you know, and... There is often like some psychology behind it. So uh, I was always curious into that, and I kind of mixed uh, the hobbies of mind, sport, and culture. And uh, so you were interested in like yeah, actually, psychology I, of people. Yeah, and... actually, like uh, in my uh, small childhood room, like I had like these posters with mountain bikers with Red Bull helmet, and uh, okay. now they are my friends, and I'm helping them. So, yeah. Oh, that's great! <laughs> so it was a very natural choice yeah, for you was, to go yeah. to Red Bull, right. and you went all the way from being an intern to right now having the whole region. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. How, how was this journey? Well, maybe for current years, it's quite unusual for a young person to work for 11 years for one company, right? Our parents and centuries, uh, all the human mankind, I guess, were working their whole lifetime in one job, usually, and usually the job of their parents. But nowadays, people are just like fluctuating all the time and um, so a lot of friends are asking me, like, why do you still stay there? Do you still feel motivated? Uh, Have you ever had, you know, a feeling like I want to do something else? Or? Oh, yeah, sure, of course I did. But then when I looked into the market and I was, uh, well, you know, you can always uh, get quick money and be rich soon and then retire. I guess that's quite a common goal in the startup scene also, right? <laughs> Help the, uh, make the world a better place and then become rich quickly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I guess uh, I quite already early at university knew that even if I make quick money, there could be like two scenarios afterwards. You know, uh, I could uh, then lose the focus, like actually lose the motivation. So I, I'm 35, I sold my company to Facebook and I'm a billionaire, so what shall I do now? And you know, if you listen to stories to people like that, they oftentimes are frustrated because they 
have no meaning in their life. And as you already develop in the 10 years in your career, kind of habit that you wake up, you work hard, then it's very hard, I guess, uh, to actually fulfill your childhood dream to buy, uh, I don't know, camper one and travel around the world. You actually mm. like feel you are missing something and it's just the habit you taught yourself by doing hard work in a startup, I guess. And the second scenario might be that you are hunted by the bad things you've done by making the quick money, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I actually think it's good not to be trapped in the kind of uh, technological evolution mindset, which is like make your status in the work be become like high position and make a lot of money. I guess that was something we grew up, our parents grew up, and um, I guess like the modern psychology is actually looking more on it, that it's good to find uh, the purpose and the meaning in the work. And uh, also that if you are 60 now, 70, it's something like 40 a few years ago, thanks to the health uh, care and uh, all the development in this area, I guess um, it's good actually to find a job which can make you happy and it's kind of maybe phrased, but I don't feel myself that I would like to like make quick money. Of course, I would like to pay my mortgage, but <laughs> I still feel if I win some lottery, as you know these stories of people who win lottery, they usually just yeah. spend it and they are they frustrated. Go yeah. So, yeah. I don't know do if you, I answered your question or... Uh, <laughs> do you also work with some startups or is... Are you just, you know, solely at Red Bull or do you have some side projects that you can pursue and mm -hmm. make you happy right, so that yeah. you don't quit? Well, I've always been thinking about it. That it would be amazing if I get these uh, experiences and kind of the stability from a company and then I could do as a side job something m meaningful, helpful, culture, design, whatever. And uh, I'm not good at it yet, so definitely maybe uh, tonight uh, after the <laughs> conference I will have but a chance to talk to somebody. And are you open to like collaboration? Oh yeah, definitely I am. Like uh, I started to follow the Umsam Umtam CZ if you know that. It's like kind of nice platform uh, where a lot of um, NGOs are offering uh, their job positions for maybe some consultants and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and then professionals on the other side from business sphere who would like to help but don't want to leave their work okay. are kind of like so uh, like freelancing jumping for business yeah, exactly. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or not for business people, yeah, for business people, but in the NGO sphere specifically. But I still haven't uh, made it. So yeah, that's something I would like to do. Yeah, maybe tonight. More. Yeah. <laughs> but I still feel like kind of a freshman, uh, even in my work, that there's like so much to learn and still so many things to explore and my Evernote book list <laughs> and stuff like that, things to do and things to learn to read uh, so long that I still feel I will get to the phase where I will change the course from learner maybe to some so teacher. What, how did the, the view of marketing change in Red Bull over those 11 years, I think, that mm -hmm. you have been there? Right, yeah, it did. Uh, and I think it's quite... Maybe because the last 10 yeah. years, you know, there was a right, the yeah, disruption yeah, yeah. technology. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. And I think it's one of the reasons actually why I'm still staying there and why I'm being appreciated. It's just because I love changes and innovation, you know, and I guess it's quite hard for some people uh, as things are changing so quickly, you know, mainly in digital sphere, like you just uh, found uh, some amazing uh, social media side and it just dies b before it can go public, right? And oftentimes technology is changing so quickly that people cannot like uh, customize to that, right? Uh, there are so many applications going on on just your smartphone, you would love to Hmm. use but you just don't have the chance to try them so and then it's even harder for companies and startups to actually jump on this track right so but I naturally love this so I think it was very interesting that in today's world you know it's so hard to keep the attention of people you know it's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. in just seconds yeah. and we had you know 60 people here for 10 right. minutes watching yeah. nobody was checking their phones I think that was I was you, really you guys are doing something I was right. really waiting <laughs> for the uh, raised hand to stop the movie, but I guess it's just, in Czech Republic at least, it's not common to be so open and stand up for, <laughs> I guess there were several people who wanted to quit it, but yeah. Do you think uh, some of the things that you do at Red Bull are, you know, applicable to startups as well? Or is it very specific, hmm. like a yeah. corporate strategy already? Well, yeah, I think it doesn't matter much if you are in a corporate business or if you are a startup entrepreneur. I guess it's just about the people. Again, maybe another phrase, but I can clearly see it maybe in some countries 
where you don't see the personalities are quite fitting for the company culture, they have struggled hmm. with uh, their results and KPIs, but, and vice versa. You can have really poor country with bad economy, hmm. bad situation, but they still achieve and overachieve their goals. So I guess you can just see it by the people that they are kind of enthusiastic. And, and so you travel around the world, over 40 countries, is marketing, it, does it work the same everywhere? Is it like people have some, you know, hooks in, right, in their right, heads that yeah. you can still use? Well, I don't feel that I have like explored just a bit from the role. There's like so much left <laughs> and I don't think you can do it in one lifetime. But definitely there are huge cultures, mainly in like Asia, you know, and Latin America, I guess. Yeah, it's so, so you customize your approaches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we do. Can you share some something specific? Well, um, of course, on one hand side, the globalization and internet kind of made everything more similar, you know, everybody's looking to the same heroes on Instagram and everybody wants to wear Nike t-shirt, you know, and maybe drink some favorite drink. But uh, on the other hand, this is good. For, like internet in general is very helpful, I guess, for Africa and other markets where are poor people, it can help you a lot uh, with education. You can get it free, it can help you with healthcare. You can read a lot how to cure your case if you are away from or you don't have money for the healthcare. And there's like a lot of benefit in it. But on the other hand, I don't like um, the small cultures being destroyed. Mm. You know, so and everything Being becomes to be together. quite unified. And so I like when we do some like small projects in the sm small countries, which are based on the local traditions, you know. So we oftentimes like you look uh, in the history books and <laughs> try to find some new twist how to make it again uh, funny for young audience. Okay. Um, I saw you were preparing something. Yeah, Can you I tell us <laughs> what is it? So the first one is like CEO, I guess most of the people, or who is here who want to be a CEO? Or who has a company? Never? Or who is CEO already? Okay, there are a few folks. <laughs> so I find it like it's good to be like chief enthusiasm officer, you know? <laughs> I guess that's the major role in many successful companies that you have, you can see the drive from the main people. And the other one is uh, just about uh, innovation. So I heard from you that many of people in this audience are um, starting on their career. Or like who is here starting with some startup or planning to start some startup? Wow, so the rest you already have like Pretty cool start. What are you guys doing? So just tell me. <laughs> we're not are you, CEOs, not starting anything. <laughs> so what are you doing? Maybe you. Uh, I currently work in Microsoft. Okay, and you are planning to quit the company and become <laughs> an entrepreneur. <laughs> no, I like the way the company works right now, and it gives me a lot of experience to see right. how like the new scope of company is mm -hmm. working. So I'm still learning, and mm -hmm. right now it's not something that I would like to stay in. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's quite dangerous, I would say, this uh -huh. route. I took it myself that uh, you just uh, keep telling yourself I will get my own startup later on when I get <laughs> enough. And I'm still here, like, you know, <laughs> waiting for it. So maybe when I turn 60, I will start my startup when quitting the job. So, yeah, but I guess. So isn't Red Bull a bit more like a, you know, like a startup? What is the company culture like? Right. Is it I, like lose or you have yeah. strong politics? I guess like you can be a fighter and you can like, you know, the world is always, um, and the changes in the world are based on the people who go in against the logic, right? Against the stereotypes. So even if you are in some company which is very strict and against startup culture, you can definitely at least try to make it there, I guess. Yeah, so and the other one is, uh, so it's, kind of like uh, innovation. Do you know the What If uh, agency or the book, What If? No, so, yeah, you know, perfect. Yeah, so it's uh, London uh, based and now they have offices around the world and it's one of the world best uh, innovation agency. And uh, one of their main principle how to like kind of innovate and I think it's very good for startups if you are thinking like what should I do? I want to do a startup or what, what should it be? Or if you already have an idea and you just want to fine tune it. So, I use this for a long time already and it's uh, just like called for air. So you have the idea and uh, first of all you try to re-express it. So for example, imagine you wanna explain the idea uh, to your grandma. How would you do it? 
right? You know, mainly in startup uh, community, you can see like a lot of phrases and buzzwords being used. So just try to tell it to your kid maybe also or to your parents and then try to explain it to alien who does not know anything about the world, like how we live, why we make money, why we need clothes and stuff like that. So go really beyond the basic expectations, what we know. And you can also play theater or just like do some pantomime or whatever. So this might help you then to actually have a different point of view on your idea. The other one is uh, about like looking, it's, the idea here is like you are starting when you are a young kid in a small stream. And then as you are learning, it get, it's becoming bigger and bigger river. And as more you are stayed, for example, in one discipline or in one field, the river becomes really thick and really big like uh, Dunai or Amazon River, but um, if you are changing the jobs a lot, like every two years you have completely, completely different, then you are like making little more streams. So both of these is okay, but sometimes it's good to mix the people. And uh, it's quite hard uh, to come with a solution if you are still thinking in the same uh, area where you created a problem, mm -hmm. right? So for example, if uh, so Xerox, uh, who they were working for, had an issue with, uh, in the 90s with their printing machines that it, the paper got stuck quite often, right? So they were thinking how to make this, uh, uh, how to fix this, and they were like looking in the world outside of uh, printing devices, what else gets stuck in your life? You know, what else gets stuck? <laughs> what? Yeah, like toilet, for example, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, life itself can get stuck. Can so. you? Yeah, exactly. Or for example, nose, when you have flu, your nose is stuck. <laughs> so what happens with your nose? Usually you can breathe with one of the holes, right? So one is stuck, then the other one you can breathe. Well, how can you take this to the printing machine? So then they first in the world became like with two printing paper like uh, inserts, you know? And that was kind of the idea, like just look completely outside of your discipline and maybe you can take something to your own idea. And the third revolution is, um, you just use uh, completely crazy what if phrases, like what if uh, people can fly? How would your startup application project would look like and if people can fly? Or what if you get billion dollars? What would you do? How would you like make the project different or the same? Or what if you have zero budget? Mm -hmm. How would you do it? Is it possible actually to execute your project and your startup idea if you have zero budget? And there are like tons of uh, what if questions you can come up and it can completely like uh, switch your view. So, um, and the last one, random links, you just open your book or your favorite magazine, pick a word, and you try to find some connection with the word and your project. So this can also maybe open your mind and you can come up with something different. So it's always very different, you know, when you have these brainstormings, people tend to sometimes criticize and we've been there and done that, you know, we are different, we as company are better, we have tried this two years ago, I guess, mainly as the world is changing so quickly. Something which didn't work at all two years ago could be a really cool idea nowadays. And I guess it's good to not criticize at all at the beginning, early stages, and then when you go through all of this and other brainstorming techniques, you can go to the filtering and harvesting and actually good at look at all the papers you have around the table and then start to actually uh, incorporating your other analytical part of brain, but just don't use it. Mm -hmm. in the early stages, right? Yeah, so that's about it. Okay. So did they teach this in school or did you learn this? No, 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 I just uh, wanted to uh, know a bit more just, about okay. innovation, so I uh, I'm came across this book. I'm pretty curious about, you studied marketing, right? Yeah. So was there a big difference about the theory that they were teaching you and then when you joined okay. Red Bull? Well, uh, I was not the ideal prototype to answer this question because I was not a good student in STEM or <laughs> So I've never read completely the Kotler, Philip Kotler book and stuff like that, which are the basics, so I cannot tell, uh, but of course it's... Uh, and they didn't ask in the interview? <laughs> well, as, uh, I think Mark Twain said, like, I've never allowed school to be, become an obstacle in my education, right? So uh, I kind of <laughs> felt uh, the same at uh, third grade, like, you know, the first two, three years were amazing. Like, the school engineering is really cool, I guess, the best in country at least if you want to do something which involves marketing and uh, artistic disciplines, you know, because you have in one faculty photography, animation, and fashion design and everything together, and you work a lot from the early stages in the first grade together, so that was amazing. But then later on where, when there were, you know, some young, young doctorants uh, trying to teach you like uh, 
event management and they have never done an event in their life. They just studied it and I had the opportunity mm. already to work with some like amazing people. So I kind of decided to quit. And, and uh, so how do you source the people then if you, you know, on one hand that the school is not that important? Where you mean you, for people in my team? For, yeah, for your team, for right, Red yeah. Bull, or how yeah, did yeah. you get into Red Bull? I guess uh, it differs by country, but in Czech Republic currently when I see somebody who has a CV that studied school in Czech Republic and have no uh, working experience or own project, meanwhile I just don't invite them at all. However, the good CV is because I guess like currently the education system unfortunately in Czech Republic is set up the way that uh, you are kind of just like making your young hood longer mm. and you are just having fun on the parties, you know. <laughs> I enjoy that part too, definitely. I'm not against it, but just uh, I think it's really good to start your work uh, experiences. And it doesn't matter on. if it's somebody's own project. It doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, yeah, working exactly. somewhere. Yeah, sure. It doesn't need to be a big company, just your own project. Just try everything, like small things. Yeah. Do you have also programs, you know, for first timers? Like an intern or? Yeah, of course, like uh, whoever would like to uh, get some like paid uh, in internship, uh, definitely write me on LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of open to always hire freelancers. I have, like, okay. Just here in Prague, I have like 15 freelancers. So definitely open to some people. Or you can go to Red Bull CZ slash uh, Carriera or Red Bull com slash jobs and you can apply <laughs> for some free positions. <laughs> okay, let's go back uh, yeah. just generally to marketing. What do you see as some trends, you know, in marketing for the future hmm. and how technology is impacting your work? Right, yeah. I'll, like, I'll check this. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Has anybody asked a question already or no? If I just should check it if it's frozen or... <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> then go ahead. Hmm. Great, it's working. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, so should I answer your or this one? Mine, this one. the next one. Okay, right. <laughs> so, um, that might seem like an obvious question, but I think it's really good and hard question because, uh, of course, you can always find stories and articles about uh, trends and upcoming uh, visions, but I kind of don't, would like, want, don't want to do that. It's like, you never know, you know. If you always look backwards and look at the movies, mm. people usually are not completely right. So, <laughs> it depends on the kind of business. Like, if you... Our FMCG, of course, you don't need to look so much in the future uh, than if you are a technology company, right? But in general, I guess more and more important is just, uh, which is good for startup, uh, how we take care about uh, people, the planet, and people become more and more aware okay. of uh, the impact they have on the planet and other people. So it's not just like the making money, making money for so I, I hope at least anymore in the future. Do you have some green project? at Red Bull as well? Because uh, it seems like it's, you know, sports. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine, but burning a lot of gasoline in yeah, those I cars. See, yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah, we do that, yeah. Uh, so we do, for example, Wings for Life. Um, it's a chari charity uh, taking, working on a cure for spinal cord injury. So all these people who are on a wheelchair should uh, in one day be able to walk again. And we just like focus completely on this one. There is also a worldwide uh, running event. Uh, so it's at the beginning of May, also in Bratislava or uh, Germany or Austria, not in Prague, but uh, you can join there or you can use a mobile application and mm. do a, like a selfie run. And all the start, starting fee goes to this uh, foundation. Yeah, and for example, in uh, South Africa, we do, it's called uh, uh, Amapico. And it's a project where we help actually uh, young entrepreneurs, uh, okay. for example, there is uh, one girl in South Africa who is collecting all over the streets plastic bags. Then she uh, puts them like in a big machine and make them make like a cloth out of it and create like uh, serious backpacks and put a solar uh, battery charger on the backpacks and just give it uh, for free to kids because there is quite a big problem. Uh, you know, it always starts with ed education, everything, I guess. And so there is a problem that a lot of people uh, got kidnapped or raped or anything on their 20 kilometers uh, way to mm. school every day. And on the other hand, when they get back home, there is no electricity and they cannot do the homework. So by wearing this backpack, the battery charges so they can uh, have a light on their way back home and then for the school, school works. Yeah, so similar project like this. That's, that's cool. really cool, but 
Uh, maybe you should promote it a little bit more that people know that you are doing all these good things because it's, yeah. it's really amazing. Yeah, that's our problem in general. Like we do so many things and people mm. don't know about it. You know, we always like focus in the communication more on scenes. It's not like we would do like a big commercial and then put it in the whole world. It's more just about like you like uh, basketball or you like uh, chess. Then you maybe just know this one project of mm. Red Bull and nothing else. And that's okay for us. Uh, who are your target group? So you have extreme sports mm -hmm. and sportsmen in general. Mm -hmm. Is it like more, you know, maybe startups, right. people it's, working hard, yeah, long yeah. hours? Like we started, of course, in the extreme sports, but currently it's quite hard to sell six billion cans yearly to skateboarders, you know? So, <laughs> of course, it got quite wider and we support all, so everything 18 plus. It's kind it of seems hard like every it. person buys a can a year, right? Almost. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's look at the questions. So the question, yeah, so... Uh, let's take the first one. I was helping, uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a fashion brand uh, uh, based in Prague called Odivi, and uh, I don't work uh, there. So it's kind of readers of this, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I don't work there anymore, but um, uh, I used to date the girl, so... She I, was in Forbes, just, yeah, she just was the recently, last one. Yeah, Forbes 30 under 30. Yeah. So, and she's like doing really well now. She's just like traveling all over the world on fashion shows and fashion weeks in like Chicago, Singapore and everything. So she is really doing pretty well. So I'm happy for that. And uh, at the beginning when I uh, started to date her, I saw like she's really good at uh, making clothes, but she had like no website, no video and no social media and stuff like that. So uh, she, she was really good at what she done and she, had the idea how to also do the marketing, but you know, if you're working by yourself, it's always it's hard, hard to do everything. So that's what I do recommend always. Like if you have a startup, just go public as early as you can. Like okay. when people are afraid, like, yeah, but somebody will steal my idea in oh. China, make it cheaper. But <laughs> I guess like if you, this will happen anyway. Whenever you come to the market, this will happen, you know? And if you are not passionate enough and about the idea, they will beat you anyway later on. Yeah, you have to be good enough to, yeah. to be able to protect it and stay true, ahead true. of the competition. Yeah, so just go early as possible out and uh, get all the feedback you can and just keep like in the cycle, you know, like test it uh, and implement uh, all the feedback. And I guess it's very good to be open to feedback it's and criticism. It's also similar with Red Bull, right? You have a lot of competitors. Yeah, I guess maybe. Yeah. But <laughs> we are doing a very... Uh, <laughs> but I guess we are quite uh, introvert. We don't look so much on what competition is doing. We okay. just like, have our way, but... Uh, I don't think that's an ideal scenario, at least for startups, from my point of view. I think it's good, actually, to be uh, early on open to criticism and then also uh, getting people on board. Some so can you share how did this work at, uh, at Odivi? Mm -hmm. How did you build up the yeah. brand? Where did you start? Yeah, so uh, we were just like starting with the easy things, like creating some photo shootings, videos, preparing the website and all these obvious stuff. And then very early on, it was about creating a team because I guess that's very important. If you want to mm. grow, you need a team to do it. So you don't just work uh, till the night, you know, and you just became frustrated maybe from the project or you have you like psychological issues. You don't have balance your, uh, you know, free time, your hobbies and your family or whatever. So I guess you can, of course, though, go on a maximum on a full throttle into your idea and don't care about the rest of the life. And there are many examples of people who are successful this way. And I guess this is actually maybe, mainly, especially in art, if you look at all the famous painters and musicians, I don't know any one of them who would be without psychological problems, you know? Like, um, <laughs> no, seriously, like if you look way in the history, like all the painters, all the musicians, it seemed to me at least when I read their stories, they have really big issues from childhood. And, uh, but this is the way actually that you have something which is like, eating you inside uh, wherever it comes from and you're just like putting, throwing it out in uh, your masterpiece, right? So, but in business, I think it's good actually to have it more balanced yeah. and uh, also take care of your family, of your friends and of your free time. So, and I guess you can do it only by getting more people who are on the same level of thinking with you or maybe who have, are the complete opposite. So they can mm -hmm. be like a reflection and mirror to you but just start with freelancers, go to universities which are similar to your field and just like ask them that they want actually the, some practice. That's the practice I'm talking about. When I'm like looking for people, if somebody was working for free on some project, that's exactly amazing, you know? True, and usually those people are the ones that yeah. they, they, they have the drive that they are willing to yeah, do something right. and work. Yeah. 
Um, how do you choose your athletes? Results are important for sure, but is that all? No, definitely. Thanks for that question. That's not at all. Uh, it's uh, mainly about the personality. Okay. So, you know, we as Red Bull have some values and... Uh, so what are your core values? I think some of them were in the video, right? Probably. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Mm. Well, I, I, I guess you can tell it, like, it's not so important. I don't want to go <laughs> through them too much, but uh, in general, like, you know how the athletes behave, how they look, and you want to have somebody not only who is, like, on the top level, but everybody in the scene is just, like, hating him because he's such an asshole, you know, okay. always just focusing on winning and not uh, partying or not uh, saying hi to everybody, you know, being very antisocial. So this is something we don't want to have see in our athletes, so we always ask the community, the trainers, organizers of the events, how they actually see this kid, and mm. we usually start very early on, when they are like 15, 16 at the beginning of their careers. Wow. We have quite a uh, few nice training centers around the world, it, it looks like in NASA. So usually it's like old <laughs> cottage building from wood, and when you get inside, underground there's like amazing technological equipment, <laughs> so they just like plug you all this. Uh, uh, electrical charges and blood tests and everything and you're just like doing various physiological and psychological tests. So we do this with the young talents who go through the first filter how they behave and mm -hmm. how um, and if they succeed also on the psychological and physiological level then we start to help them and we train them, we, uh, we make them possible to travel on the, for example if you're a snowboarder you need to be on yeah. New Zealand or somewhere to train. And um, then maybe five, ten years later on, they start to win world championships and Olympic games. And so it costs us a lot of money. Yeah, it's a really long Take term them. project. Yeah, and I definitely think it's great. And that's what I love about Red Bull, like that we have the long term vision, you know. Uh, we are not afraid of investing a lot of money into mm -hmm. somebody, even they still don't deliver now, but we believe in the future. And by that, uh, you know, if you become an Olympic winner and you come back home and there are so many journalists at the airport and just in the first week, it's so frustrating for all the athletes because they have so many different emails and phone calls from all the big companies like, hey, I will give you a car, I will give you a phone, I will mm. give you a t-shirt or whatever. And usually these companies need to pay a lot of money to these athletes and um, mm. because... It's yeah. too late. Yeah, it's the too late. Is too high. For us, we are friends, you know, so we don't need to pay them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so. what, what is the success rate of, you know... You, you invest in these young people. Yeah, it's uh, almost unbelievable for me how good it is. So the people who are doing the tests and the selections are pretty cool. So I'm still amazed like how few, I don't know anybody here in uh, Czech Republic at least who would be <coughs> not successful. Okay. Um, so Red Bull has really broad market activities, events, a race, music academy, Red Bull TV. Are these nice, still just nice. market channels or revenue? Nice, matters? Victor, good down. So, definitely, we s what I think is good for a startup and company to focus on one thing at the beginning and don't fragment yourself at the very early stages, you okay. know? So, if you look at our can, it's the same design for 30 years. We still had this product for 23 years only and nothing at all else. So, you know, you have this typical growing curve of the product uh, phase. So I, I think it's really good not to fragment. Although you have this opportunity, you have these ideas on the mm. way, start another company. But in this one, just focus on it. When you get to the top, then you can uh, go to more places. So we did exactly the same. So we started uh, in 2008 uh, Red Bull Media House. It's a completely new company, uh, which is focused on uh, producing and creating content and mainly also selling the content. So for example, um, there are a lot of like, uh, TV stations and cinemas who are buying our movies. Mm. Um, there are some uh, companies who are pay, paying uh, advertisements on our website. So if you go to Red Bull Com, you expect there are just like some product information, but actually it's kind of lifestyle magazine about sport and culture with a lot of visitors. So companies who are into this target group are actually paying us money for banners, mm. which is pretty funny. And also locally, like TV stations, for example, the national TV is paying us money that they can show Red Bull Air Race, which is mentioned, and a half hour commercial. And <laughs> so we don't pay them, they actually pay us. So that's the idea behind Red Bull Media House. We have like over 20 mobile applications. You can download its uh, freemium model. Uh, usually <clears throat> we spend a lot of money on creating them because we want to have it kind of cool. And uh, it's always good also have a lot of money in the pocket for updates, you know. 
and but usually in a month or two it uh, just got back so all the money do you, do you outsource any of these or you build everything in house even the mobile apps? yeah we do almost everything in house yeah. okay that's actually an interesting idea uh, I saw a movie not too long ago with Warren Buffett mm -hmm. so different industry mm -hmm. but he was saying the same thing you can only peel one potato at a time right yeah so i, I think this can be applied to a lot of things and especially mm. for the startups at the beginning when mm. they need to focus yeah focus on the one thing yeah and with the events it's the same like we used to have you used to see only red bull logos there and currently if you look at the red bull areas you can see many partners mm. all over the place so yeah we do monetize our assets so it's not only promotion but yeah okay how do you choose Okay, we have that one. What is the process of selecting athletes, teams, your company support? It's kind of similar. Yeah, I guess we covered that one, right? Didn't we? Yeah? The sugar. Yeah, the sugar. It's changing so quickly, so I don't Are know. Are there any sportsmen who don't want to be connected with energy drinks containing high sugar? Yeah, of <laughs> course they are. Yeah. sugar for you yeah, yeah. as well, right? Yeah, of course. Like, uh, it's good. We, like, we, first of all, don't communicate it proactively. Maybe it's a mistake. All the ingredients is under um, effects on your body, you know, but you can definitely <laughs> search it down on, on our, our website, like comparison, like how much orange juice have more sugar than Red mm. Bull and stuff like that. So... Uh, I guess it's your brood, your brain cannot live without sugar. So you know, I I'm not a fan of sugar-free versions of anything. Mm. I think like uh, it's always better to go for the sugar. <laughs> you know, it's just always about the income and outcome. Okay. So you, you if you look at our athletes because they are friends of mine, I know them that they can drink easily ten beers, ten Red Bulls with uh, a bottle of vodka. You know, and uh, <laughs> next month they win world championship. You know, it's uh, just because. Uh, you put something in and you need to put it out. It's that simple. So if you are sitting in an office, uh, definitely don't eat sugar, right? <laughs> but if you are active, come on, enjoy it. Okay. So do you still do some extreme sports? Or how, Not what really, are I, the most extreme things that you try? I'm just lucky that I have a good metabolism. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but of course there are people who don't like Red Bull and we don't need to work with everybody and be satisfying for everybody, which is, I guess, always good for a product not have the vision that everybody needs to use it, you know, everybody needs to be satisfied. Don't be afraid to be polarizing. Don't be afraid that people hate you, you know, it's always better than to be mediocre, that some people love you and some people hate you, right? Okay. Um, do you personally see a connection between a big brand as Red nice. Bull and legal cannabis world? The industry is growing at a huge rate. I would love to see a connection there. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I haven't heard about anything uh, <laughs> in our company, but it's a really good idea. I love that, and uh, I'm definitely. So you have not considered this so well, far. No, not so far. At Red Bull, but I think uh, uh, in, in some states probably it would be illegal, you know, to yeah. come up with a green can and yeah, well, like mix if, something. If you look into history, how alcohol was banned, and how if you thought that the world is uh, round and not flat, they burned you, you know, and all these stereotypes. So I guess. Uh, this might change a lot, and I believe that, for example, uh, psychedelic drugs uh, might be like in the future something uh, which people actually see like, wow, that's uh, beneficial, you know, it actually can help people. And mainly like in startup scene, if you ask the Silicon Valley guys, like, what are their experiences with drugs? It's always interesting. And I believe like um, alcohol, for example, and smoking cigarettes is way worse than many okay. other habits or drugs, you know, so. I guess uh, so. Is I, I saw this also on your LinkedIn that you are pretty strict on choosing the project that you would work on, like you would not right, work yeah, on tobacco. Yeah. And I feel quite sad about this. That there is quite imbalance. It seems to me that uh, the best paying companies are the worst one for the meaning for the world, right? You know, so you have all these like oil banking mm. and fast food and uh, you know drugs and uh, ammunition, you know war, all these things like uh, make so much money and they can pay you a lot of money. So a lot of these headcounts come from these mm. areas. But yeah, I feel sorry it's not more balanced. So hopefully I will have a chance to make some little adjustment there from at least yeah. my close circle. I really like this one. How much Red Bull do you drink? Because you have yeah, a yeah. bottle of water with you. So um, I don't have it as a lemonade and I think 
we've never told it that it's a thing you should be drinking as a refreshment. It's uh, something which has its uh, places. Either it can be driving, so whenever I have like long distance driving, because I don't drink coffee. Um, is it then okay I have if, you know, somebody drinks it on a daily basis, one can per day? Yeah, of course, like, you know, we you have some people that do that. We, we sell like six billion cans a year, you know, and there is not single one uh, proof of death for 30 years. Look at how many proof deaths you have from different areas, right? So okay. uh, I have no problem talking about these topics, but I don't think it's, I mm. think it's more like a media fun than uh, if you look at it from a bigger perspective. Um, so yeah, I do drink it when I, I want to have a pretty cool party uh, when I, <laughs> yeah, so I drink today after the lunch or when I had a meeting and I wanted to be fresh. So when I have the chance, I drink tea. When I am on travels or whatever, then I get a Red Bull. Yeah. Okay. So we already had the <coughs> top two. And the next one, do you plan to take Red Bull Air Race to Prague? Yes, we would love to. Like we've but tried, I think the, yeah. the Charles Bridges, you know, they're yeah, too small. Unfortunately, there are like <laughs> two bad things. So the river, it's very narrow, yeah. and the bridges are very close to each other. Okay. So we so were maybe, thinking like you know, about around the towers. No, yeah, there's a lot of towers. Oh around. yeah. So <laughs> you can do some showcase, uh, not the Red Bull Air Race. We were thinking doing it in Brno, you know, on the dam. Uh, we already did Red Bull Air Race duel in Bratislava, in okay. the city center, by the Uf UFO, uh -huh, if you know uh -huh. there. So it was pretty cool. Like just few pylons and two pilots. It was pretty cool. There were like 110,000 people around the river. That was nice event, but unfortunately, so far, maybe some drone race in the future will okay. be more easier. Yeah. So do you have plans for, you, you know, you look at these all new things and oh, yeah, I, sure. I know yeah. Intel, at mm -hmm. the, the last Super Bowl, they had mm -hmm. amazing 500 drones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, with the flag, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. There will be one event in Germany. Oh, it's called uh, Game of Drones. Okay. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> Cool. Um, do you work with agencies? As an agency, what can I offer you that you cannot or do not want to do hmm. internally? That's a very hard question, Mikhail, to answer for me because on one hand, we are very close and we try to do as many things possible internally. So when you see some event like Red Bull Air Race, usually what companies do, like if you have some company news football of Aliga, you know, they are like uh, titled uh, sponsors. So they just like give you the money to the organizer and you name it that way. So that's not the case. Uh, when we have something called Red Bull event, then it's just our local inside production. But uh, things are changing and we are getting, as we are growing and we do more and more projects, uh, we definitely already are getting uh, help mm. from agencies. So either you can be event agency we already have few here, but definitely always open to find some new ones. Uh, we have media agency um, for a long term, so they help us with uh, you know media buying, and we have creative agency, who is creating visuals, you know POS materials, posters, anything like that. So yeah, these are usually all long term, but uh, sometimes what we do is also if there is like a small individual or small agency, we hook them to the big mm -hmm. one we already have contract with. So they can help them with some small projects. So, so does it happen sometimes that you see a really good campaign or or something on the market, and then you try to contact the person that you know did it? Yeah, unfortunately, this doesn't happen yet because <laughs> you know we receive every day like 20, 30 emails okay. just here in Czech Republic from various like FTS agencies that mm. they would like to work with us. But it's quite well. There is currently a new system how to like contact all these people. So don't write me personally. I'm very bad with emails, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to succeed, you have an agency. Just go to our website and uh, redbull.com and write there. Um, and it's very well good done that it goes to the right person who are actually mm -hmm. responsible for the area you are writing about, and they will let you know if it's good or not. Try to make it as brief as possible, which is a general good tip I think for everybody writing to any company because a lot of the emails are very long. Like, you know, people are so passionate about it. They know so many details about it. That <laughs> they just like want to sell it so hard and don't miss anything which is good and which might catch your attention. But what happens, you know, you have two, 300 emails daily, so you just like usually skip it. Yeah. And you don't read it though. Maybe you read the first paragraph. If the first sentence doesn't catch you, you usually don't uh, go through it. So I think it's good just be really short and 
put some link or uh, video in, next to it. Mm. Or even better, don't write emails at all. Just come to the office of the company, do some uh, theater or whatever, you know, some funny thing, bring a pizza or uh, do some whatever crazy thing which would make you stand out from the crowd, you know, because companies receive so many emails from and some, people. And something to match your, match yeah. your culture more. Yeah, and even <laughs> if it, and I guess it's not about Red Bull culture. I guess like any company, even if you are the most strict sure. company, you'd actually appreciate it, right? Mm. If somebody mm. comes to your office and... Tries really hard. Yeah, yeah, so we all are people in the end and however the philosophies of our companies are, we still have some values, you know, and it's good to touch you emotionally as a person and also as an employee, so I guess email is not the ideal emotional thing. That's true, that's true. <laughs> okay, I think you touched on the first one, if, you, if, if Red Bull has done any research on combining with vodka. Yeah, well, we don't uh, uh, support it, uh, mixed consumption, it's a functional drink, not party drink, but yeah, we grew there and um, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I had so many good memories on the... <laughs> I really love the part when like it's like 3, 4 p.m. and everybody goes to sleep and you are just trashed and you just don't know what you are doing and you fall asleep somewhere. But usually like it's kind of sinusoid as in everything in the business too. So if you go over this point and the sun <laughs> comes to rise, you have a breakfast, you know, and all these philosophical debates arise. So I remember really happy for the Red Bull vodka I had, uh, <laughs> which helped me to go to this mornings and such a nice uh, memories and good friends created during these times. That's cool. <laughs> Can you name some of the agencies that you work with? It's uh, pretty specific. Yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking as it's recorded, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you look we'll at the agencies, <laughs> they promote themselves. Okay, they so, promote so yeah. they promote that they work with Red Yeah, I guess so, like every agency puts it on their website. Yeah. But it's being changed like every two, three years, I guess. So. What are Red Bull's goals? Hmm. And what do you see as challenges in yeah, the future? So, so the goal is to become the best um, media and beverage company in the world. Um, easy as that. How, how far <laughs> are you from there? Yeah, well, it depends on the point of view, but I guess <laughs> it's, I guess it's always good to have some uh, vision which is big in front of you, right? You want to have like, Small steps, uh, so you can feel satisfied every day, every evening you finish your work, you just like see the checked to-dos and you are happy and I think it's really good for many people just to like be satisfied and celebrate these small moments because it's very easy to get into the phase that you just like are succeeding in so many things, but you are still like working and working because you, as an innovator, which most of you here are definitely, you see so many different things you could do next, so many ideas. So you just like finish something, you sell something to whoever for huge money, and, but you are already working on something else. So I guess that's quite dangerous. Um, and it's good to celebrate these small moments mm. that uh, you are healthy and you could have a nice chat with somebody and yeah. uh, you could watch some nice movie or you just uh, made a nice phone call. You know, there are some people, for example, in sales, it's very hard. I think mm. in the sales department to not fall in the routine. So you c I heard a story that there is one guy who has like two jars, two glasses, and they're like full, full of some pins or something. And every time he makes a uh, sales hard phone call, he puts a pin to the <laughs> pin. So at the end, like it doesn't matter if the phone call is good or not, you just made it, you know? And you okay. made 20 phone calls in the day, so you can be happy about it. the goal is to make the jar yeah, full. If you make 200 calls in a day, which is uh, achievable, one, could be uh, successful, yeah, right? And right. it could be a big company. And it, it could, could make your day, yeah, right. So I guess it's good to have small goals in front of you and uh, celebrate them, but definitely always have like a bigger plan, which is almost un unachievable. So you actually keep the drive, not only for yourself, because I, when you believe the idea, you are always happy to work, but it's mainly important for the team, I guess. Mm. So the employees need to not only like uh, see the vision clearly and see the mission of the company, which, which is very important. Like oftentimes if you ask uh, employees like, what is the mission of your company? They don't know sometimes, you know, you know? and um, I guess not, you also need the employees to co-create the mission. So they need to be not only part of it as execution, but they should also influence it so they can actually work for it and feel it makes some sense.
Okay, uh, I see there is more and more questions coming in, but we are already over uh, 20 minutes, so I would uh, finish it here. Maybe if you have, just to sum it up, some, you know, the most important tips from marketing that you see for... Yeah, I actually broke, I don't know what will be it, but... Yeah, this is in Czech because I don't know it will be in English. <laughs> this either, yeah, but I can translate it. These are like two quotes I like uh, recently, so... Uh, lack of time is only lack of priorities. <laughs> so I think this is very important. Like everybody now tells, like, I don't have time. How are you? You know, I'm so busy. What I tell all the time recently is like, you know, it's so amazing. I'm doing so great. There are just like one big issue. There are so many great things I cannot choose from, you know, hmm. which to focus on. So, but I guess it's only about your priorities. So even if you are uh, working as the lowest person in your company or if you, you, if you are CEO of the world, you always have the same amount of time. So it's just about the priorities, what you focus on, applying the Pareto 80-20 law and all these tips, you know, from Tim Ferriss mm. and other guys who give you tips how to work hard. You know, I guess it's good to uh, realize it's really necessity to work hard. Uh, I guess it's not important to have huge, big idea. You can have a very small idea, but uh, put a huge amount of mm. uh, work and enthusiasm behind it. But of course, then you can apply some tweaks from the four-hour work week uh, into it. And the other one is uh, the only thing which uh, is blocking you for, from, for, from achieving uh, what you want is the story you keep telling yourself, why are you not there yet? Hmm. You know, and I think it's very true for... Um, so it's more about the mindset. Yeah, it's uh, true for a lot of young people, including myself, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. We all have visions uh, how we can change the world and be rich and be successful and be happy. Everybody wants to be the happy, that's the only constant, but we just mm. all see a different ways how to get there, you know. So I guess it's really good to be tr true to yourself and I feel more and more it's the most important thing in business in life, just to know yourself very well, just like use any methods you can use, so very <laughs> spiritual, esoterical ones, or very practical, analytical one, which suits you better, but just like know yourself. Don't fight with it. If you had some problems with childhood, that your parents were bad to you, or they were spoiling you, they were too good to you. If uh, your wife or husband is frustrating you, or they are spoiling you, if you have mm -hmm. some issues, you live in a poor country, you live in too rich country with too many competition, you always can have some obstacles, and I guess, uh, just look into yourself why you behave, how you behave, why you have goals which you have. Mm. And just like, okay, get along with it and find some team members which can be a good balance uh, to your strengths and uh, to your weaknesses. And like, yeah. Okay, great. So I think you'll stay here for yeah, a little bit more. So you guys, if you had some questions, you can talk to Milan. And thanks a lot. Please, a big round of applause. Yeah, thank you too. Thank you. Thank you.